has Under Armour finally found its sea legs after spending years in the doghouse. The athletic apparel maker reported a quarter two weeks ago that, while not exactly a barn burner, was at least better than feared. In response, the stock surged nearly 30% over the next three days, although since then it's given back some gains, but the market's been rough. Now, Under Armour has spent ages struggling against Nike, resurgent Adidas. This was a $50 stock in 2015, now it's at $16.62. Of course, it was at 13 just days before the company reported. And even though Under Armour's guidance was subpar, investors are starting to believe that maybe it could be the beginning of a major comeback, in part because management announced a major restructuring effort, and I want to know if they're focused. That's why it's been one of the biggest percentage gainers in the S&P 500 this year. But here's the thing. The stock remains very unloved. Still a lot of analysts with sell ratings out there. They're doubters. So if there's a real turn here, I think the upside could be enormous, whereas the risk remains pretty slim. That's the benefit of all expectations. So I think it's time we checked in with Kevin Plank. He's the founder, chairman, and CEO of Under Armour. Get a better sense of where his company might be headed. Mr. Plank, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Kevin. Tim, great to see right, you. All right, have a seat. All right, Kevin, a couple years ago, we were at the Super Bowl together. Yes. And you gave me this ball. It said, protect <laughs> this house. The stock was at $45.64. Did you stop protecting the house? Never. Let tell me, me. Let me tell you three things. Okay. We're focused as a business. We're confident in what we're doing. And I think we've demonstrated over the life of our company, we're the best at getting better. And that's All one right. thing. We spent 17 at the best at getting better. We're going to continue to do that. Now, we're going to go right to the nitty gritty. You say the DNA that fuels the bones, muscle, and blood of our number is our people. But I wonder, when you mention in this that you now walk the halls, did you stop walking the halls? No. Oh. None of that happened. Look, it, when you go through growth, I think this is a moment in time for our business and for our brand where, you know, just take a step back into focus. And you look at the decisions, the things that we did in 2017. In 2013, we were a $2.3 billion company. By the end of 16, we were approaching $5 billion in revenues, $4.875 billion. In One revenue. of the fastest growing companies in history. And in doing that, there's a lot of strain, a lot of things that that puts on your business. So what we did, we had to settle and get used to that. So we did three major things in okay. 2017. Okay. Okay. We upgraded our systems. Right? We implemented SAP, right. so we're never going to have to do that again. We have the scale of a, of a great company that can give us that, uh, that, that pliability as a business to be able to grow forever. Uh, we changed our, our structure. So we went from a head of apparel, a head of footwear, a head of accessories, to now we have distinct categories like a head of running, a head of training, a head of basketball. Within each a head one of, of those, what the customer wants. We can stay closer to the consumer that way, where we can go talk to consumers. And what we found out when we did that, of keeping the consumer at the center of every single thing that we do, is that the consumer is an athlete, is an athlete, is an athlete. What you'll find you'll hear from us is our focus on performance, and some people say that may be a weakness for us. We believe will prove to be our long-term greatest in, strength. In 2017, we were a loud company and a quiet brand. In 2018, our plan is to be a quiet company and a loud brand. What does that mean for this? It means let's talk about franchises. Let's talk about the stories that we have. Let's okay. put the things in the front foot, which is, you know, I mentioned the third thing that we did in 17. We focused on our leadership. We brought in a new president, a guy named Patrick Frisk, who's been my partner now. Background? In about seven, eight months, so about, about a dozen years at Gore, about another 10 years at VF Corporation, where he was in charge of the Outdoor Coalition, so Vans, Timberland, North Face, uh, Smart Most successful, Wolf, the coalition. Understands, and I have great respect for, for VF. I think they're really wonderful at what they do. And then most recently as the CEO of Aldo. So he understands retail, and he's been and lived at, at every level. Well, have you worked with him? I mean, look, you're, what are you, kind of co-CEO? Or is this, is this Phil Knight and Mark Parker, the guys who you stuck the finger in the eye and they woke up? We're Under Armour, first of all. And so as that, so my job is to make sure we have a vision for our brand and we continue to march down that road. So Patrick's job is that when he came in, we were very clear on establishing a true go-to-market. So he has the strategy, he has supply chain, product marketing, sales. And that allows us to build a franchise like this, which is a new program we just launched February 1st of this year. This is, which the really, hot, this is a very hot show. It's the culmination of about a year's worth of work that goes into bringing this to life. And this is the kind of thing you'll continue to see from our brand Fitness. over and over. This is a, a $140 shoe. So when people ask about how's your Under Armour brand, this shoe's basically sold out in all of our direct consumer. You'll, you'll have to work and be able to find the shoe anywhere. And it's got what we call the three features that we look for, our SPF factor. It's got style, it's a great looking shoe. Yeah. You make it on the wall, you'll want to buy it. It's got performance and technology. The step in comfort is like nothing you've seen before uh, uh, with the fit. And then from a technology standpoint, the shoe has a chip in it. So not only I can go for a run, I don't need my phone, and I can track and I can tell you how far I went, my split, my distance, and my cadence, which is actually the stride length that you have that allows you to coach and have a better, healthier run. Uh, I'm taking the metaphor a little further. The Kevin Plank I love has a man who has a chip in it, too. Yeah. Then you had a chip on your shoulder. You're a Baltimore guy. People didn't believe. They didn't, they didn't think you had it. You, and you beat everybody. Internationally, you're killing it. 
and then U.S. fell down. Here's a piece, short-term cash constraints. That's not the Kevin Plank. Which Kevin Plank are we with here right now? We're running. We're focused. We're moving forward. And again, we say the best at getting better. Like, I want that theme to really drive home with people to understand who we are and what we're about. And so, a lot of lessons learned. I've got an 11-year-old girl and a 14-year-old boy. I have a line to them. I say, scars are cool. Scars are cool because they remind us of where we've been. They remind us of what we've seen, but they also know what we're focused and we're moving. And so we've seen some bruises. We've seen some of those things. But this is a company that knows who it is. It's going to continue to march forward. Are you humbled by what happened? I'd like to think I never needed that lesson. But like any of us, yeah, we'll always... We had a, an unbelievable run, and we've also been, you know, we, we spent a, a long time really focusing on ourselves, of asking right. ourselves that question. And I think more about my team. I'd hate to ever think that, you know, my job as the CEO of the company is make sure that I'm representing each and every teammate. I can't tell you how proud I am of our company, of the way that they've right. persevered, the resilience of the team that we have, of the 14,000 global teammates that we have, the teammates in Baltimore, the teammates in the 30 cities and offices we have all over the world, in our retail stores, et cetera. You know, we, we have a company that's a culture that's incredibly proud, and this chapter 17 that we live through and what we're doing in 18 will prove to be one of the most important chapters that we've had in our 22-year history. You are as hot overseas as you are right now, arguably, from that previous quarter, cold domestically. Is it getting hotter domestically because of these products, and is international still strong, China? Jim, one of, so first of all, to level set, you know, the expectation, you know, we're one of three brands, now four brands, that has actually crossed that $5 billion threshold. So we are on the precipice of saying that we have the ability to be one of the great athletic brands. So when you talk about markets like China, incredibly exciting for us. As I said, when we study the consumer, put them at the center of everything we do, right. that athlete is athlete. In China, Under Armour is known as a professional brand. You know, in, 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 in Europe, in, in, in London, in the UK, you'll find that Under Armour, it is the athletic brand. And we find that if we stay true to that core, that DNA of what makes us us, we're going to do great. And so you'll see markets, you'll see trend, you'll see fashion will go back and forth. And we'll play to that to an extent, but it'll be grounded in the roots of that. And we say fashion means things that just look great. Everything we do is going to perform. There's also an ethos here that I always respected about you and your family. You were David out there in Beaver and it's Goliath. But you know what? Goliath somehow came back. Is there a second round for David? You know, we're playing in a league right now that probably has three or four teams in the league. Okay. And the fact is, when one of the teams is, is Cleveland and the other one's Golden State, you know, Stephen Curry is going to have points when you play the right. Warriors. You know, LeBron's going to score some points. Right. So when we look at this and say, how come you guys aren't undefeated anymore? And say, look, we're still standing. We're in the game. And, and we're stronger than ever. And we will keep fighting. You'll watch us throw. And, and we're going to win some games. Connected fitness. Where is it? It's over 225 million people on our how, platform. Oh, you have 225 million people on the platform. A, how are you not killing it? So this is the information we have. So just to give you some perspective, sure. we talk about insights that we have. So we have more than, just from the beginning of this year, over 99 million workouts, over 137 million miles logged and run, including on our new platform with Hover. Uh, we have over 130,000 pounds lost through our MyFitnessPal database. So the information we have of driving toward that vision of having a single view of the consumer to make us the most culturally centered company in the world of the understanding of our consumer is still very much uh, the dream and the vision that we have. 13 February, you did a conference call, and in it you said, listen, 2018 is going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, is there any way that 2018 is better than I think that we've learned a lot of lessons. And the first thing we do is we're going to put one foot in front of the other. So you're under going to, you're going to under promise, over deliver Our like company, my Philadelphia Eagles? Well, you say over promise and over deliver. And so what <laughs> we want to do is make sure that we have a very clear understanding of what we want to do. Is, my team is the first and most important thing. I want my team to feel that we have the balance of our plan, the strategy that we put in place, the three things that we really attacked for ourselves as a company in 2017. Let them take root. Let us become excellent. Let us become that really loud brand and that quiet company that just knows how to run, implement the go-to-market, and you'll watch, and I think, a, a very successful company. But it just takes time. We're going to run that play. Look me in the eye. Are you the focused Kevin Plank that I always been? Are you focused? Tell me! There is nothing and no place I'd rather be than right here, right now, at this moment. Thank you, Jim Cramer. We're going to run hard and win. Thank you, Kevin Ply. He's the founder, chairman, CEO of Under Armour. I think he's back. Thank you. Stay with me. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.